It all started because my stepbrother Danny has absolutely no sense of self-preservation. He went out into the backyard and saw our Newfoundland hound Figaro just laying on the grass, chilling out. Quick note, Figaro's a Newfoundland hound. These are not small dogs. They are massive at best. And worse, actually, they're, they're huge no matter what you do. And Figaro's not a small example of the breed. He's 150 pounds. His paws are as big as my face. His claws probably could be my thumb length if we didn't religiously clip them. His jaws alone are these, this big, massive snout. It's big and squared off, and his teeth are just there with these big, drooling jowls, letting you see just how many teeth he has, and that they're, they look rather sharp. I don't know. I've never tested it, and I never want to. Danny sees this dog, and the first thing that goes through his mind well, I can't confirm this because I really, really don't want to know how he thinks sometimes. But he somehow thinks it's a good idea to start taunting the dog. He runs in and starts batting at the dog. You know, gets Figaro agitated and gets him to chase him. So he starts running around in circles, so Figaro really wants to catch him. And he's starting to bark and yip. And at this point, I'm just looking out my window and I'm kind of laughing, but I can actually see Figaro barking. Not here. Well, yeah, I can hear it. It's incredibly loud. But I can see it because when he barks, the glass on the window shakes. The window frame shakes. I can feel it reverberating in the bed and the walls. And it, it, it's actually kind of terrifying if you don't know the figure is a sweetheart. Except Danny has him riled up and he's chasing. It doesn't really matter if Figaro hurts him or not. Because just having some a dog that's 150 pounds lay on you means you might lose a leg because it'll be crushed. Yeah. So what ends up happening is Danny's just running over. He gets to the point where Figaro's trying to catch him, so he goes over to the fence, sprints over it, and lands on the other side. Figaro, big dog, but he's not too fast, so he's just slow enough where Danny can out slightly outrun him, isn't able to catch him in time, gets to the fence, and he can't jump over because it's about chest height, and for Figaro, that's a little higher than his head. Danny just stands on the other side of the fence, going, nah, 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 and taunting the dog and just getting him worked up. And Figaro's just not taking it. But there's really not much he can do. But he just sits there, and it's, well, the first sign that things might have not been going Danny's way is when Figaro's bark stopping a loud, just massive roar, almost, and more of these little quick yips that he does when he's really, really worked up. And <laughs> it was a warning sign that everyone saw, and Danny, of course, probably completely ignored, because, hey, there's a fence between them. What's the worst that could happen? Turned out the worst that could happen was Figaro putting his nose under the lowest rung of the fence and just lifting it out of the ground. This fence is um, at least three feet dug into the ground, wooden slats and wire mesh between them so no one can get through. Figaro lifts it out without a hassle, and the entire thing just topples over without any support. They just stare at each other for a second. Danny just froze. Figaro, I've never seen a dog look smug before, but that was a very good example that day. <laughs> Danny just made a beeline for the cul-de-sac, because there's a tree that grows in the center, and there's a few low-hanging branches that he could reach. Figaro is just tearing after him. And within seconds... Danny reaches the tree, but just as he reaches it, Figaro catches up to him, and they lunge at the same time, and I swear, Figaro just nips the bottom of Danny's pants, tearing a small hole in him. And Danny's just sitting in the tree, because he knows the second he comes down, Figaro will get him, and sure, he'll be fine, but Figaro doesn't like to be taunted. His response is to lay on the person, get really close to their face, and growl. And when a 150-pound dog with jaws bigger than your face is growling inches away from your eyes, you do whatever the heck he wants. And usually that's nothing. They basically ended up staying there until Figaro just got bored and walked away. But really, we all know who won. Again, Danny has no sense of self-preservation. And, well... I won't admit that I found it amusing. Okay, I will admit to that, but... 
Yeah. Good memories. I'd like to say this was the last time Danny messed with Figaro, but I don't even think it was the last time that hour. Again, no sense of self-preservation.